Hey, episode 9 this should be now? I'm doing this on... Well, yeah. Still the 24th, it's almost the 25th. Um, doing these before my birthday stream, just to get a few episodes. I'm gonna try to shoot to record about 4 total episodes before uh, my birthday stream, so... We'll see where we get and what we do. But, welcome back. It has been quite a few days, because I think the last time I recorded was on, uh, was before the 10th, because Easter hadn't passed yet. <clears throat> but anyway, let's, uh, kind of get, like, what the hell am I doing here? This is house that will be built. Ooh, levy stuff, so we're not gonna mess with that. Ooh, hello. Level 42 enemies. <laughs> I think that's a quest somebody's on. Oh yeah, but last time we got the mount, so I loaded in on the mount. Let's go jousty. I need fits with Lancer and all. <coughs> Wait, no! You stab me in the ass. going on here sorry but I must insist that you oh an adventure and a rather seasoned looking one besides on the off chance you're not simply here to gop perhaps you could lend us a hand you see despite the fervent protests pro protestations never heard about protesting that way but okay uh, of those dusk whites over there, we cannot permit civilians within the ruins at this time. Capable men and women like you, on the other hand, are more than welcome. That is, if you got the stones for it. Pray seek out the others stationed at Quarry Mill. They can apprise you of the details. <laughs> Brah. We just came all the way over here to go all the way back. <clears throat> well met, adventure. I take it you have come to learn more of a recent happenings at Izamhar. The site is of interest owing to the Gamorian ruins. Gamora being an underground city which predates Gridania, in case you were unaware. Any road, a few days past, we received reports from several anthropogeographers that a magical gateway of some sort had appeared in the ruins, and that all manners of creatures were coming and going through it. My men and I were among the first to examine it, and while it's hard to explain, we crossed in across the threshold into a set of corridors we'd never seen before. And then suddenly, each and every one of us was filled with an inexplicable sense of dread. It was all I could do to take even a single step. According to Ian E. Una Kotar, who accompanied us, the ruins are warded with mad powerful magics that sap the spirits and ether of all those who enter rendering them Easy prey for creatures within. Thankfully, he managed to devise a solution. Ether pool arms and armor, which safeguard and channel the wielder's energies, that they might withstand the ruins' magics. Unfortunately, it does little to prevent us from losing our way. The beggar's belief, every time we have dared to venture into the ruins, we have found the path 
to be changed. We suspect this too may be the work of an unfathomable, powerful mage. Needless to say, something strange is afoot, and traditional tactics are not like to suffice. Even experienced adventurers will need to proceed with caution. In any event, if you believe you have what it takes to brave the ruins and discover what secrets lie in its deepest depths, you need but say the word. Palace of the Dead unlocked. You you have you now have access to the Palace of the Dead. You may enter solo or in a party of up to four players. When speaking with the Wood Whaler Captain, you'll be given the option to enter with either a fixed party or a matched party via the matching system. Players will start at level 1 regardless of the current class or job level. Furthermore, only Etherpool arms and Etherpool armor may be used when inside the Palace of the Dead. Each floor of the Palace of the Dead is randomly generated, including the placement of enemies, treasure coffers, and traps. Further details can be had by speaking with the wood. <laughs> uh, anyway, further details can be had by speaking with the wood whaler expeditionary captain. Okay, so here, if you enter, you get like uh, let's see, it should yeah, you get two different save files, and if one dies, you gotta like start over. Uh, these ether arm and armor, the more you play, you can get up to like uh, plus 99, I believe it is. Um, I've done it on my main account. I will consider doing this in an episode, but I do also need to test how uh, like Discord chat and stuff works. That I might do an episode of this with Striker. I probably won't do this alone, just because I have already grinded that out. Uh, so it would be good to just have two people. Um, I might also decide which classes I'm going to have on here besides the Lancer. And level them up here. Because it's a pretty good way to level up. Uh, like every, like, run you get at least, like, a level or two. If, once you get, like, leveled up more. Uh, fail or not, you usually get quite a bit of experience throughout the thing. Plus, you get stuff to unlock and whatnot, because there's a lot of, like, items and whatnot in there. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to unlock that, but I wanted to test. I need to still test Discord on the PlayStation 5, and if the Discord counts as a party, and that her voice will be picked up in the video, because if it is, that's perfect. If it isn't... It might be a little more chaotic. It's part of the reason I don't do a lot of co-op streams, because you don't really get the voice too well. But anyway, let's see. We have that. This is the main quest, so what is this? Oh, I gotcha. That's to get through that doorway. So let's 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 clear out a couple of these side things. So let's go get the door. And then we will uh Then we'll actually go to the uh golden saucer. Also, there's some kind of event going on right now. It started like last night. I don't know what it is yet. So there might be a crash course uh, episode down the line for the holiday. You have papers. Let us see now. Yes, everything appears to be in order. Go on safely, Kegels. In the future, should you wish to pass, you need only say the word. Now we can just go in and out this gate. I think... Yeah, this is an Udal, so... 
Let me head on over to Udal to do the saucer. People just dancing out here. <laughs> also, I've been working on a few things. So, you might be seeing some things. But this is one of the reasons I haven't updated like my about and everything too much. Oh wait, I could, uh, and get the day of shit from the crystal. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, I, uh, been working on a few things that essentially will be, like, an about me and all that kind of stuff, so... Hopefully that's done before my birthday stream, because I would like to add it to some commands and stuff, but we'll see. Might be in progress set up to you so this is the reception desk for flights bound for the manderville gold saucer before proceeding i must ask that you submit your ticket for inspection <clears throat> you do have a ticket yes hell yeah i do here you go it appears that everything is in order an airship will be departing shortly before the next bell shall i reserve a seat for you yes I like this place. I need to actually implement this place into like my daily routines because there's a lot of like weekly or daily kind of stuff here. And I, I really do not like have this in mindset every day. But I like the place. And you can get a lot of prizes and stuff here. Like minions, mounts. But straight up, it is also, uh. Well, it's, it's literally like a casino, so. <clears throat> a lot depends on, uh. Chance, or if you're good at some of the other, like, games and whatnot. Where all your dreams can come true. That is, all your dreams can come true if you have enough Manderville Gold Saucer points. MGP. Guild can be exchanged for MGP at the main counter in the middle of the entrance. The current rate is 10 gil for 1 MGP. Udal's, uh, Udal's law prevents the Gold Saucer from exchanging MGP if the patron already possesses more than 500. MGP cannot be converted back into gill, but the points can be used to purchase an assortment of wonderful prizes from the prize claim attendant, also located at the main counter. <clears throat> Welcome, honored guest, to the Manderville Gold Saucer, where your wildest dreams are ever but a card or a chocobo's beak away from coming true. This is your first visit. Nothing would please us more than to give you a full tour of our establishment, that you may that you might enjoy its wonders to the fullest. At the conclusion of the tour, it is our custom to offer our esteemed patrons a complimentary gift straight from the vaults of our illustrious proprietor himself. Consider it Lord Mandeville's way of personally thanking you for your patronage. Should you wish to take the tour, pray proceed to the main counter over there and speak with the receptionist. On behalf of the management, 
may I take this opportunity to thank you for choosing the gold saucer. Rest assured, my colleagues and I will spare no effort in seeing that your visit is a pleasant and profitable one. May fortune smile upon you. I never noticed that they bow. <clears throat> uh, is it you that I took? No, no, no. Exchange. I like to do that first one on a character just to have that extra 500. Welcome, traveler, to the Gold Saucer. This is the main counter where you can purchase tickets for the mini Cactopot, acquire and redeem Manderville Gold Saucer points, and much, much more. But what in the world are Manderville Gold Saucer points? I hear you cry. A most astute question, and one which I shall be too happy to answer. But first, if I may direct your gaze to your left. Beyond those majestic gates, you will find Chocobo Square, home to the Chocobo Racing Circuit. Aye, what Chocobo owner has not dreamed of pitting their fleet, fleetest bird against the realm's finest in a pulsing, quickening dash for fame and fortune? Truly, it is the sport of sultans. <clears throat> and should you desire a more elaborate contest of strategy, you will surely find it in the Minion Square, at the Lord of Reminion Tables, where would-be general pits armies of minions against one another in battles for honor and glory. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Manderville Gold Saucer Points. Put simply, MGP, as we call it for short, is the currency by which dreams are bought and sold within these walls. Or halls. <clears throat> but my associate here, besides me, can tell you more including how to go about acquiring some MGP of your very own. Pray speak with him to continue your tour. Yeah, I've already exchanged. These two... I don't know if they're playing together or just randomly, but these two are playing... Uh, triple the tirade, I think it's called. So you're about to experience the wonders of the gold saucer for the first time. How I envy you. Ah, before you venture, you want to exchange a share of your gill for MGP, a service which it is my great honor to provide. With MGP in your coin purse, you'll be able to enjoy all of the fabulous attractions we have to offer. And all of the wonderful games, if you play them with skill, you'll find your little stack of points increasing 10, 20, even 100 fold. Now that you know the fundamentals, you're ready to step out onto the floor of the gold saucer. Your tour will continue at Card Square to the southwest. The card trader there will be your guide. I would of course be happy to exchange some of your gill for the MGP before you venture on. While my associates and I strive to leave nothing unexplained, there truly is no substitute for first-hand experience, and I heartily recommend trying your hand at our many amusements for yourself. Yeah, like, you can get a... Oh, uh, that's the Mender. What do you sell? Random stuff. Prize claim. This is where I was looking at. Yeah, you, you, there's a lot of stuff here, though. Like, music stuff. Um, decorations. It depends on which one you open. I forget which one. This one has minions, but you can see some of this stuff. These these mounts. These are mounts. Two million, one million, four million, and this is actually. Oh, and here's some other uh, emotes. Yeah, you can get it. I haven't gotten, like, anything from here yet. 
There's that dance, this dance, the bee's knees dance. This is a draw emote. Oh hey, angel wings. Oh, so this is where people have wings. Is this also where, like, there's a halo? I remember there was, like, a halo thing, too. I've seen somebody with, anyway. Halo might be armor piece. Who knows? Anyway. Welcome, welcome, fair traveler. Care to test your luck with a mini cactopot ticket? Yes. Splendid, sir. Now allow me to explain. Mini Cactopot is a game of chance, available to you thrice every day. Playing is simplicity itself. Just guess the value of the covered numbers to win it big. If its grace is with you, you'll be rewarded with Mandeville Gold Saucer points galore. So, sir, do you feel lucky? Okay, well, we'll skip that, because I will actually do this right now so you can see it all <laughs> come one and come all drawing number three five two nine of the mini cat is here care to try your luck so it costs 10 to try it but here's the thing you can see values on the side so let's the biggest one would be six Yeah, let me so you can see like if you actually had one complete fully you can see what it cost but like This would have to be minimum Seven uh, So that wouldn't be six This would be ten So it could it anywhere be be like 18 Uh And this is already six, so the lowest it could be is seven as well. So let's see. Let's be thirteen already. If you have the eight there, it could be let's see, what would they be actually? Still would it be high enough. To be like really high, but I just do this. Yeah, it wasn't high enough to be the higher, but we got 21, so we did get the thousand one. That was actually get out of the way, achievements. But thank you. And then you can see afterwards what the cost. This one, if I would have done here, would have been only 119, 180. 101. This would have been 7. <clears throat> 120. This is what we got. Yeah, so we actually got the highest one by gambling on that. The 8 saved us to getting the most there, so we turned from 10 into 1080, so. It's all about math, but like, you can't really like gamble on that too much anyway, because like. So this already tells us, like... <laughs> uh, let's see... 17... Could literally be like some of the lowest ones. If it's seven, it would be one of the better ones, but I don't think it's gonna be. Yeah. We weren't gonna get that lucky twice, but let's see. 
Okay, so this one would have been a little bit more. Okay, so... Yeah, we... We could have had a little bit more, but not much more. That still was probably one of the better gambles. Okay, so I have to take this gamble. Because if that's the three, that's six. And that's ten thousand. So like I don't I don't even care. It's probably gonna end up being like the worst one. But if it's three, it's the best one. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we got. Or could have gotten. Okay, so the best would have been that one. Might have been a couple hundred more, but that's still... None of them were in the thousands anyway, so... Still wasn't bad. But yeah, you can do that three times a day. I really need to start doing that daily, too. Because you're pretty much guaranteed to add up over time. And there are prizes in here, and I don't know if they come back. I've heard that they do. But there's a mount that is the Final Fantasy... 15, I think? car and it uh is a four seater you can buy out of here but it's it, it's quite expensive so because i don't put a lot of time into the saucer i think my main character only has like anywhere from like 30 to 60 thousand and i'm pretty sure it's like a couple million so also, there are things we need to look in here. We need to get the crystals. I completely wasn't attuning to the crystals. That's my bad. Let's get the crystals. Uh, in there. There's another quest over there. Introducing us to, I believe, the fashion? Fashion contest? Oh, we got a couple things. I dress precisely as I was told, to receive such a dreadful score, not to mention the humiliating criticisms. Hmm. Hmm. You wish to know what's bothering me? That is well, for I wish to be unburdened myself. I've been having a frustrating time with the fashion report, the challenge they recently introduced. Yes, I who can play any game here blindfolded and spun around, struggle with it. To be fair to myself, though, it has a subjective element. If you have a mind for fashion, perhaps you would like to try your hand at the challenge. Go to Wonder Square and seek out Mask Rose. But be warned, the barbs on that man's tongue have barbs on their tongues. How dare they claim it wasn't a proper... Yaku? Uh, don't they know a winning hand when they see one? Yes? What do you want? Uh, I'm afraid you found me in a rather foul mood. I've had a run of poor luck with that new game, Mahjong. I hear it's all the rage in Doma. Although it seems the Gold Saucer's clientele struggle to wrap their feeble minds around its intrinsicity. In uh, intricacy. Oh my god, I can't speak. With the endless supply of shameless cheats and bumbling novices, I've yet to find a decent opponent. Perhaps you would provide me with more of a challenge. Yes, some fresh meat could be just what I need. Run along to the Manderville tables and get yourself acquainted with the basics, would you? This might be the entire, like, first half of this, uh, episode, because this, this is a big place. I forgot just how much stuff is actually in here. What is this? What is this?
Oh, it's Leap of Faith. This is what I think it is. Is this the gate? Yeah. I don't sure remember this too much. I do know. You need to get out of these. Oh, whoops! I thought I would walk up there and not fall off. And if you fall, you go back. Giving it to me, there we I actually forgot this is easier without the HUD. But we're already here, so. It's gold over there. Is that where it is? Still got a few minutes. No, the gold's over there. Got them all! Because we got everything, we got uh, 4,000 MGP. We'd have only got 2,000 if we didn't bother getting any of this stuff. That was actually convenient because I was pretty sure those are our, like time stuff. So I wasn't sure I was going to get to demonstrate that. I'm not sure though. I might like repeatedly uh, pop around, but that's why I say though, if I put a lot more time in this, you would definitely uh... you definitely get more because if you if there's like any kind of time to those and whatnot, you would you would get them fast. I forget what this one is. That's what do I do? Oh, I remember this. I don't remember exactly the placement of it. I don't remember if you have to be above or below, or like how it does. 
Getting the the small or the small big ones are easy. Okay, it's below. You pretty much get money back every time. So if you miss one a couple times, you're gonna get more eventually. So. Here. Jumbo Cactus Pot. So this one is weekly. Yes. First, you purchase a ticket. You can pick four lucky numbers, any from zero to nine that tickles your fancy. And then you just come back every week to see. Pretty much lottery. There we go. You can keep buying it, but I don't. I don't ever. Uh... Mess with that. Like, you could pop in, like, at the last second. Uh, let's see where else we need to go. And we need to do whatever's over here. We have two quests over here, actually. I don't know if I played this one. Did I? I probably have. That was too far to the right, I think. Yep. Yeah, I don't think I played this one before. I'm assuming I have to hit it in the thing there. My timing is always horrid. Oh, it's timed. It's not actually... Okay. I want to at least get one basket in. Hey, let's go! That was too slow. Damn, you have to, you have to have your timing down. Oh, that was so close. I mean, I wasted like three and I got, ended up getting 20. So, I mean, I want to see. You don't get like every shot, I think. Is that too far? Yeah. That was really close though. Upstairs. That's where the thing is. Who's this? Got much room to hit that big one. Let's go. Oh, 
pulverizing. Who's the fashion person? Oh, a new challenger has come to put his stylistic sensibilities to the test. Welcome to the fashion report, good sir. Huh? <laughs> well, what? Is everything quite all right? Guess that everything is rosy. Redolently so. Uh, excellent. Full glad I am I to hear it. Now then, I believe this is your first time participating in the fashion report. Let me to explain the concept and the rules. Fashion is a form of self-expression. What we wear without is a reflection of who we are within. Be it a conscious effort or no, this choice brings our individuality to the fore. Some folk are drawn to vibrant colors. Others may favor a loose fit for, or for comfort. And while tis well and good to dress to one's preferences, a man cannot prefer that which he does not know. The world of fashion is vast and at times daunting. But if we have the courage to take a step into the unknown, we may discover wonderful new ways of self-expression we had never considered. And tis for no other reason than to encourage folk to take that first step that I created this challenge, the fashion report. The rules are simple. I shall assign you a theme based upon which you are to attire yourself to the best of your sensibilities. I shall then judge you and award you a score. Participating is free and there is a host of fabulous prizes to be won. Courtesy of Manderville and Manderville. If you wish to know the finer points of the game, my lovely assistant, Kasume, shall be uh, shall attend you. I look forward to giving you my unadulterated, brutally honest evaluation of your fashion sense. Still yourself and let me know when you are ready to undertake this challenge. I have actually never done the fashion report either. But... Bruh. The fuck was that? <laughs> the fashion report is now available. Speak with Mass Rose in the Gold Saucer to undertake a fashion challenge. Fashion report, it's Tuesday. And our life for three days until Friday. Each challenge begins with themes given for 11 different equipment slots, not including the offhand. Adventurers then choose from their wardrobe pieces of gear that they feel will complement those themes. Masters would judge adventurers' attire and award a score from 1 to 100 based on their coordination skills. Adventurers are given four opportunities per challenge to have their attire judged. It is recommended that adventurers share insight with each other on how they fared to determine what combinations of gear earn the highest scores. MGP can be earned once per week for partaking in a fashion report, with bonus MGP being awarded to those who achieve a rating of 80 or above. Other items in stock come highly recommended. Browse to your heart's content. We got dyes. Oh, there's an emote in here, even. Got that. And the music. Yeah, so I've never really done this, so I don't know much about it, to be honest. Um, we need to go upstairs. Right? That's where the thing is missing yet. There it is! This is also where the Majan tutor is.
Also, I'm curious, have I got, no. I haven't gotten that one yet either. But then I've gotten everything except for the ones upstairs. Okay. Listen, I'll have the money ready by next week, I swear. Huh? Oh, you're not a debt collector? What a pleasant surprise. In that case, you must be here to learn how to play Domen Mahjong. I am the resident tutor at your service. Are you by any chance familiar with the game? I know my pawn from my Ron, if that's what you mean. That's not the one where the loser drinks more world bile, is it? Kami for Fen. Is that what passes for entertainment in Eorzea? Perhaps all those rumors about pirates and their drunken antics are true. <laughs> Anyway, Maja is far gentler affair. Four players sit around a table collecting tiles and scoring points. Thankfully, you'll find there is no shortage of opponents against whom to pit your wits. If you prefer, you can even practice against Automa. They gloat even less than their flesh and blood counterparts, too. Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me, and may I say, I'll be very interested to see how quickly you rise to the ranks here at the Gold Saucer. We have all of them up here. Where is... Oh, over there. Here we go. Trip Tyrant is taking Eorzea by storm. Care to try your hand at this entrancing new card game? Yeah, sure. Ah, so another challenger is born. Welcome to the world of Triple Triad, where you pit your cards against an opponent in a tense battle of skill, strategy, and the odd dose of luck. Here at Manderville Gold Saucer, I am pleased to present all new players with the cards they need to get started. To play a match, however, first you need to build a deck composed of five cards from your registered card list. Oh, and I suggest speaking with the nearby Triple Triad Trader should you wish to expand your card collection. Now I'm able to do the cards, blah blah blah, make a deck. Yeah, so I don't know how to play Triple Triad, I have not actually played that yet. But, you get the cards like anything else and you gotta go in here and use them. You can get them from bosses, I have this. A random assortment of uh, stuff on uh, on my main that I've gotten from like bosses and stuff. And somewhere in the main counter is where you sell the duplicates. This is continuing the tour. Well, aren't you a handsome one? Welcome to Card Square, home of the Triple Triad Tables. What's Triple Triad, you ask? Why, only the mind-bending, pulse-pounding, maddeningly more-ish card game that's taken the realm by storm. But don't take my word for it. Behold! Can you not feel the tension in the air? 
Form a hand of five cards and play the role of a field general sending your bravest into battle. Should you wish to learn the rules and experience the excitement for yourself, you need only ask. Start today and we'll even throw in some complimentary cards to help you on your way. You can face off against a single opponent at any time or if you crave an even greater test of skills, take part in one of our regular tourneys. And believe me when I tell you, there's no feeling quite like standing triumphant on the battlefield after vanquishing all comers. You really should try it. A minute to learn, a lifetime to master. That's triple try it. Ah, but I'm getting carried away. You have a tour to finish. Wonder Square is your next destination. Not that there's any hurry, of course, if you'd like to play a hand or two before you go. You need but say the word. Yeah, that's the tournament. I've never done any... I've never even played the game, much less done a tournament here. Uh, this is up or down? It's down. You look lost, honey. Why don't I show you around? I've been dying for some company. Wink, wink. Feast your eyes on Wonder Square, from gripping games and awe-inspiring attractions to the finest in fine dining and the freshest of fresh refreshments. There's no need to, to the Wonder's house within these halls. And let's not forget the most wondrous of them all, El Colosso, as we lovingly call our mammoth cactar mascot, is the star of some of our most popular events. Suffice it to say, you won't want to miss them. Now, I know what you're thinking. With everything going on at the Gold Saucer, how can I ever hope to keep up? But you needn't worry. My fellow gatekeepers and I will be on hand to see that you don't miss a thing. From the continuation of your tour, I've been instructed to direct you into the waiting arms of my colleague, Valida, at the Cacto Pot Board. She's one of our most popular girls, and once you meet her, I'm sure you'll understand why. Well, to top for now. We're not even gonna finish the tour yet in this, uh, part. Like, damn. At this rate, we are, like, 53 minutes in, something like that. We still have to go upstairs. <laughs> like, damn. I guess I should have done the tour while I was doing this, but eh. who, who, whoever does anything in order. Greetings, handsome. I've been waiting for you. I'm Valida, and I'd like to personally welcome you to the Event Square, the most spacious of all the areas of the Gold Saucer. Event Square is a veritable cornucopia of pleasure and delight. Doubtless, this sizable stage in the middle of the square has caught your eye. This. That is the scene of some of our most sensational attractions, so don't be shy about taking center stage. And after the curtain has fallen, why not try changing your life forever? At the Jumbo Cacto Pot, all you need is a handful of MGP and a head full of dreams. Just choose four numbers and cast your hopes to the heavens, and you never know just when she sm will smile down upon you. Now, as much as I've enjoyed getting to know you, I'm afraid it's time for us to part. The next and final leg of your tour takes you to the round square. Don't think too hard on about the name, darling. Even I'm not sure it's supposed to make sense. Yeah, she had a point. I wasn't even thinking about it until she said it, but round square? <laughs> what a name. Are you the first time visitor I was told to expect? A thousand welcomes to the Gold Saucer, and a thousand welcomes to the Round Square. How can a square be round, you ask? I'm not sure I understand the question. Moving on to more important matters is that lofty peak, not a sight to behold. That is Mount Corel, the main attraction here at Round Square. One of our most 
Oh, there we are, 55 minutes. Uh, one of our most thrilling event pits our customers against each other in a challenge to see who can most swiftly scale its heights. I tell you, the view from the summit is a sight to behold. And that concludes your tour of the Gold Saucer. While I'm sure you're eager to start enjoying yourself, pray do not forget to return to the main counter and claim your complimentary gift. Okay, it is right by the main thing, so... We will still go upstairs, but we're gonna turn this in. Welcome back, honored guest. I trust that you've come away from the tour with a greater appreciation of all the Gold Saucer has to offer. We have four minutes to get this dialogue done. Speed it up, my man. <laughs> As a token of our appreciation for your patronage, it is my greatest pleasure to offer you a complimentary gift from the personal vaults of our esteemed proprietor. Well, knock me down with a chocobo's tail feather. Is that a new customer I see? <laughs> I could hardly have picked a better time to drop in for an impromptu inspection. M Master Roland. Yes, this gentleman here has, but this moment, completed his introductory tour. Is that so? Well then, allow me to personally welcome you to the Gold Saucer. I'm Roland. Good sir, and the fellow entrusted with overseeing the, the daily affairs of this fine establishment on behalf of our esteemed proprietor. A great man, if ever there was one. You're an adventurer, yes? Aye, your dress and bearing told me as much. I dare say then... That on your travels you have seen firsthand the difficulties which, which yet plague our nation. Witness the struggles of Alamigo's displacement masses and those whose homes were consumed in the fires of the calamity. The Sultanate is not unsympathetic to their plight, of course, yet how can one begin to provide succor to such a countless multitudes? One man had an answer. Godbert Mandeville had a dream, a dream of a house of untold wonders that would provide stable employment and lodgings to the displaced, mirth and merriment to the disconsolate, and prosperity and plenty to the sultanate at large. Too many of our patrons in the Gold Saucers merely Eorzea's foremost entertainment venue, a place to forget about their cares for the day. To me, it is one of the founding stones upon which our realm will be rebuilt, a miracle wrought by the hand of the greatest man I have ever known. I'm actually going to cut this here and we'll read this in the next, like, well, again, it'll be a couple seconds, but I need to cut this and start recording again. And we'll wrap back in it. Something tells me you understand that which I have told you, that you, perchance, share a similar dream. But I shall keep you no longer. The gold saucer and all its wonders await you, friend. Pray enjoy them to your heart's content. Till we meet again, may the spinner's pole be ever kind. Maybe we would have been able to squeeze it in, but we're already at like 58 minutes. <laughs> There's like one more dialogue we wouldn't have. <laughs> what are y'all doing? Gonna add that. That makes sense. Okay. Take us upstairs because we we need to get the stuff up there. And take a gander of what we got up here too. There's one over here. Finer minor. Wait on. I yeah, I see. 
they be like enclosed around it? Maybe? Confused. Either claim your reward and end the game, or try again to earn an even larger payout. But remember, if you fail, all previous rewards are forfeit. Interesting. I haven't played this one either, but we'll just take the 60 and go. We're not trying to be here forever. Fall. Out on a limb, what's this? Oh, is this the same kind of thing? It's just botany. What the fuck? Interesting. I just want to point out. Oh, whoops. What a name. Last one there. And we tune to all of them. For those with a need for speed and a yearning for competition, Manderfield Gold Saucer provides the perfect solution. Are you content to merely amble through life, shuffling forward step by step at a snail's pace? Imagine the wind in your hair as you cross the finish line atop a chocobo, the thrill of competition and the joy of triumph. Would that not be far, far greater? Ah, but that you are here bes bespeaks desire already present, does it not? I, I think this eve, a new jockey we do receive. Alas, a jockey cannot compete without a suitable steed, a race chocobo to be precise. Mayhap you think to nominate your own personal chocobo. If so, strike the thought from your mind at once, for only a chocobo trained for the task will suffice. But fear not, my friend, for it so happens we have a surplus of fledglings in need of new companions. In fact, to any who wish to don the mantle of chocobo jockey, the gold, the Mandeville gold saucer will generously gift a race chocobo. You need only journey to the Mughal's Gifts Mounts in Bent Branch Meadows where fledging race chocobos receive their initial training. Make your intentions known to the trainer named Cater Catering and she will see you matched with a suitable steed. Okay, now we're gonna do the main story again. Wait, do we? Do we have the Vesper Bay tickets? Yes, we do. Also, I might soon have Striker send me some stuff from my other character, but. Wait, wait. Oh, she's going to teach me how to craft, I remember. Craft the glamour things. Hey, Thatcher, just going down. 
We gotta see, uh... With, uh... Minfilia. I, I assume it's Minfilia that's here. Ida, Papa Limo! How you doing, buddies? Welcome back, Higgles. Lady Minfilia awaits you within. Welcome back. It seems you have wasted no time putting your skills to work. How do I know? Why, the recruitment officer called to regale me with the tale of your heroics. The pride in his voice was palpable. We scions are truly fortunate to have you with us, Kegels. Now, when we last spoke, I said that I wanted you to meet some friends, did I not? Well, I neglected to mention that you have already met them. Tatru, please show them in. This way, sirs. Thanks again for getting us out of the mess. We owe you our lives. Biggs, how you doing, my man? But I don't think we've properly introduced ourselves. I'm Biggs. A and I'm... I'm... Gods, man, spit it out, will you? What wedge at your service? I'm pleased to say that Biggs and Wedge will be staying with us for a while. Magitech-driven contraptions such as airships grow ever more vital to the city-states of Eorzea. As a neutral party, it was judged that we Scions should serve as the keepers of this technology. Of course, for this we needed the knowledge of experts, and so we requested the assistance of Garland Ironworks, who very kindly sent us two of their finest engineers. Our happy family continues to grow. On behalf of the Scions, I bid you, welcome to the Waking Sands. Like every soul here, I love Eorzea. And I count myself blessed to have been given this chance to stand with you all and fight for the future of the realm. Never have I known such fulfillment, such happiness. Self-management. Now, having set aside the formalities, oh. we have a favor to ask of you. Uriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have conducted a study at the behest of the Order of the Twin Adder. Papalimo, Ida, a synopsis, if you would. Our task was to survey the behavior of the Sylphs, a beast tribe indigenous to the Twelveswood. Oh, how to describe them. They look like gizzle greens, floating ones, that worship the primal Ramu. Ahem. <clears throat> Though technically a beast tribe, Sylphs are blessed with a comparatively personable demeanor, conducive to peaceful communication. Offering us an invaluable opportunity to learn what the beast tribes know of the primals. While Ramu's existence is well documented, the Sylphs do not, or perhaps cannot, summon the primal any longer, insofar as can be ascertained. Until such time as we know, it would be unwise to assume that the threat posed by the Primal has passed. Which leaves Gridania with the added worry of not knowing what they should be worrying about. In that regard, they are hardly alone. What we can say with absolute certainty is that Gridania has its hands full fending off Garuda. Who, I need hardly remind you, is among the most savage and terrible of all known primals. 
In short, it is essential that we approach the Sylphs in as diplomatic a manner as possible. Words and actions can be misconstrued. The only sure way to communicate our intentions is the Echo. Winning the Sylphs' favor may well bring us a step closer to mitigating the threat of the Primals. Will you help us? I am grateful. All day, every day. Lovely. Well, as much as I'd like to help, I'm afraid I would be of little use to anyone in Gridania. A veritable babe in the woods. Ida and Papalimo, however, should be able to see the forest for the trees. Is that not so, Minfilia? Indeed. You are willing? Leave it to me. Us, Ida! Us! Dania, so let's go. I'm gonna get to a little bit over 30, and then we'll do an episode of doing the Lancer missions. Um, oh, it's right over here. I always forget. I really need to figure out later on about the instruments and doing music with them and stuff. That looks so neat to be able to just play music randomly. We know far too little of the sylphs to lay any worthwhile plans. We must call upon the scions once more if we are to... Ah, beg pardons. This is a terrible nasty habit of mine to think aloud. But tell me, what brings you to the adder's nest? Well, if it isn't Private Burton reporting for duty, that's the zeal I like to see from an enterprising young serpent. Good evening, Commander. Sorry to disappoint you, but other business brings us here today. Ida, Papalimo, always a pleasure to see the two of you. My men tell me you quest in the name of the Scions of late. Quite so, Commander. A little bird told us that the Twin Adders was in need of our adventuring prowess. Hey, little bird sings true. No doubt you've heard that we're investigating the Sils. That curious beast tribe that calls the depths of the Twelve's Wood home. The Sils are, for the most part, a peaceable bunch. Much to the delight of the other Seedseer, who has no desire to see her people embroiled in yet another fruitless war. <laughs> the Twin Adder is of the same mind. And tis precisely for this reason that the Sylph's relation to the Primal Ramu has raised a flag of warning amongst our ranks. Friendly as they may appear, beastmen will be beastmen. Should there even be a sliver of a chance that the summoning of a Primal might disturb the balance between Gridonia and the Sylphic tribes, it is a possibility we cannot ignore. Better to be safe than sorry, indeed. Do we strike at Ramu, or leave the Sylphs to their own ways? That is the question. Yet I find myself lacking ample knowledge to arrive at an answer. Opinions abound within Gridania, but to listen only to one's own is among the greatest mistakes a commander can make. I would hear from the other side, the Sylphs themselves and seek an impartial party to serve as my liaison. 
That is where your scion, or you scions come in. The sylphs of Little Solace remain untempered and have held many a productive dialogue with our people. I would hear their candid thoughts on their tempered brethren. That said, I urge you to exercise due caution. Sylphic tradition and etiquette bear little resemblance to our own. It would not do to have any cross-cultural faux pas get in the way of our productive parlay. In route to Little Solace, you will come upon the Hawthorn Hut. Our officer stationed there can enlighten you as to how to win the Sylph's favor. May your expedition be a worthwhile one. A friendly pal palaver? A friendly pal palaver with the Sylphs. This should be a pleasant enough diversion. The Hawthorne Hut, was it? Why, I believe the ferry departing from West Shore Pier should take us straight there. A friendly palaver. I don't know how to say that or what that even is. I'm guessing it's like a parlay, but like, I've never heard that word. Or if I have, I've definitely never seen it. I hope this will be as straightforward as you say, Papalimo. Hey, what are you? Oh, I think I know what that is. We'll just continue the story, because... Got like 40 minutes left of this episode. Yeah, those are my Lancer missions. I haven't done any of them yet, so we're going to probably have like an entire-ish episode of them when I get to them. <laughs> hey, the ferry docked at the base of this hill will carry you across the lake to the East Shroud. Once you're ashore, head due east and you should find the Hawthorne Hut without much trouble. Can you get that one? Yeah. So I've already been here, so... I can technically just go... Whew. That's the levy again. I haven't talked to this one, so... I guess you do have to talk to them all. That's a good future thing to know. Indeed, I am Emmeline of the Twin Adder. I understand you're here to learn of the Sylphs, yes? For all their whimsy, they are a wary lot. Particularly since the Empire has come to the Shroud. Earn their trust, however, and they're friendly. They're as friendly as any folk. They have their quirks, but so do we all, no? Would you know more? You'd do well to speak with the master of this hut, Rolf. He's forgotten more about the Sylphs than I'll ever know. come to learn a thing or two about the Sylphs, have you? I'll tell you one thing. They're a peculiar folk. How peculiar... Peculiar, you say? Well, just let me tell you. They they are... They are... Er... Beg pardon, friend. My memory's just not what it used to be. I've seen much and more in my adventuring days, and it's all a clutter in my noggin now. 
Though I've shared my stories with those around the hut, he might have more luck with them. The Sils? Yes, Father told me his stories plenty of times. What I've always found most captivating is how their concept of etiquette is almost completely alien to our own. You do best not to underestimate them on account of their childlike looks, lest your face end up a mess of glyphs, squiggles, and chocobo scratches. Teehee. Somebody else must be doing this quest, because they did the exact same thing I just did. The quickest way to the Quiver Woman's heart might be through her stomach. But don't even think of trying to foist your foodstuffs on a sylph. They sustain themselves simply by bathing in the sun, or so Ralph once told me. The Sylphs, inveterate tricksters and troublemakers, that's what they are. One day they're drawing marble faces on our mass, the next they're sending our young sentries falling to the bottom of the ravine. Tell them to stop, and they just laugh at you. Ruff claims they harbor no ill will, but I dare say such pranks are no laughing matters. Oh, of course, of course. Hearing your stories, well, my stories, has brought the memories flooding back to me. I feel, I feel like dancing. Yes. Nothing brings people together quite like a little toe tapping. A sylph told me long ago that dancing is a time-honored greeting among their kind. You do well to remember this. It just may help in favor of our, mo our forest friends. Oh, still here? Eh? Great. There's one more thing you should know about the Sils. They don't take kindly to guests who show up empty-handed. To earn their trust, you do well to bring along a... Uh... Uh... uh Drat! What was it again? And my wife Rosa and I were just speaking of the matter not days ago. Forgive me, friend. Speak to Rosa at the comb. Her memory should prove more reliable than my own. Peace offering for the Sylphs? Were it anyone else, I'd recommend a jar of honey, but I fear that wouldn't get you past their front doorstep, dear. No, their tastes run more to the unusual. Are you perchance familiar with milk root? That's what we call the root of that most fiendish seedkin, the oku. When chewed, it excuses a cloudy liquid that's said to induce curious visions in the imbiter. You not catch me dead trying the stuff, but the still seem to enjoy it to no end. I've not seen an oku around the comb in quite some time, but I did encounter a suspicious clump of grass the other day. Were you to stimulate it somehow, with some of this amber syrup, for example, you might be surprised at what comes out. Good luck. I'm thinking about it. Uh, let me.
get these materials out of my low level gear here. And this is telling me about melding requests. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So weird leaving so many quests behind. I'm, a, I'm always wanting to like try to grab it. I didn't start to stop doing that until like uh, later DLCs. Ah, you're back. Was my wife able to direct you to a suitable offering? Milk root. But of course, those silks quaff that cloudy stuff as quick as I do a flagon of mead. The effect's just about the same as well. Any road, a gift of milk root will have the silks calling you friend and brother the moment they lay eyes on it. Now let me wrap that up for you. I'm starting to feel a bit woozy. I've taken the liberty of wrapping your milk root well and good. This should keep it nice and fresh, not to mention spare you from the, that god's awful stench. The silks love the stuff, but me, I'd rather bury my nose in chocobo dung. I dare say the reek even rivals the breath of the morble. Uh, that put an end to my adventuring days. But I can tell you that story another time. You've more important matters to attend to today, yes? The Silfs are an eccentric bunch, but I've shared their company enough to know they're kind at heart. They'll not shun one whose intentions are true. May your parlay be a fruitful one, friend. And do stop by on your return. There's a flagon of full flower mead with your name on it if you'd regale me with your adventuring tales. Ah, and a four I forget. Don't go traipsing off just yet. Emmeline here uh, would have a word with you. Travel in safety, friend, and do pass along my regards to the winged ones. It's good to see your not knowledge of sylphic culture has matured. I see no reason to delay your mission any further. Upon your arrival at Little Solace, seek out a young sylph by the name of Komux? Com Comusio? <laughs> he has served as an intermediate er, intermediary between our peoples on many a, an occasion and has the close ear of his tribe's elder. I see that Hawthorne has furnished you with some of that Malodorus root, the Sil so adore. I have something of far greater import for you to deliver. A missive from the elder seed seer herself. To summarize the letter's contents in brief, it vouches for the integrity of our envoy. That would be you, and re restates Gradania's desire to maintain a harmonious relationship with our long standing friends of the forest. The war with the Ixel has taken a toll on our resources. We can ill afford to get mired in another conflict. I need not impress upon you any further the importance of this mission. May the Twelve see you return with good tidings. That little Moogle, uh, delivery, where is it? Where's, yeah. The way it wiggles. That little. 
I always hear it and it, it like I'm always like what's going on and then I like remember oh there's a delivery moogle around. It's just funny to me. You ugly. You an ugly giant gnat. Walking one is not familiar to this one. This one does not trust strange walking ones. Strange dancing ones might be a different story, but this one expects no such thing. Walking one should go home and leave this one be. Did I impress you yet? This one would welcome walking one who moves like these ones. If walking one would talk to this one, this one would uh, will answer. This one is busy one, so walking one should speak with quick tongue. Walking one would bring gift to this one. Walking one is most kind. Walking one brings milk root. Milk root fills this one with great joy. This one gives thanks. Gives many, many thanks. <clears throat> Walking one carries message for elder one. This one will deliver the message to elder one. Walking one should not worry. Hey, Papa Limo, Ida. Hello there. We're envoys from Gardonia, and we're here to treat with your people. Hi. We've come to pay our respects to your elder and to learn from him more of your Lord Ramu. Who are these ones? These walking ones come from Gondonia? Walking one became a dancing one and brought milk root, but walking one tricks this one. This one does not like tricks. This one will speak no more. Elder one is busy. Walking one should go home. Go, go home? You say, but the Sosa Little Sauce have always welcomed Gridonian's envoys with open wings. This letter carried by Kiggles here is an oath of peace penned by the Elder Seed Seer herself. Still, you could refuse us? This one's reasons are no business of walking ones. Elder one has no words for Gridonia. Walking ones waste everyone's time. Well, I never turned away at the gates. Whatever did we do to deserve such a rude welcome? Was Kiggle's jig insufficiently jiggy? Excuse me. I don't know how to get jiggy with it. I'm as baffled as you, but something tells me recent events have our erstwhile fluttering friends feeling uncommonly wary. It would seem we've no choice but to ask around and see how we might earn their trust. Say, Kegels, are you in a mood for dancing? That's right. Dancing. You went through all that trouble to learn the Sylph's traditional greeting, but you greeted in hardly any of them. Why, if I were a Sylph, I'd be beside myself with delight to see an adventure expressing an interest in my culture. Me? Of course, I'd be happy to join. Ooh, ooh. There, there go those bloody leg cramps of mine acting up again. Ida! Ma'am! You are not doing that. Bad Eda. Slap. Dance, 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 dance. Oh! Walking one knows jolly dance. 
Jolly Dance fills this one with good cheer. Let these two be friends. Walking one would be friend to these ones. This one is overjoyed, but this one keeps the ways of weaving a secret. Even if walking one learned the secret, walking one could not weave in the same way. Ah, walking one is friend to these ones. Friendly like gracious elder one of Forest City. Knows how to dance into these ones hearts. Kiggles, would you like to hear the good news or the bad the better news? The good news is that your lovely dancing has brought smiles and high spirits to all of Little Solace. The better news? Why, I've thoroughly recovered from those accursed leg cramps. Onward to our next adventure! <clears throat> of course, your cramps went away after I was done dancing. Kegels, as an adventurer, you're no stranger to helping distressed folk, I'd wager. Tales of good deeds are quick to spread. The adventurer who comes to aid of the local populace can go from stranger to hero overnight. No doubt you see what I'm getting at. The sylphs who make their home in Little Solace do so, having been driven from their woodland home. Surely they have their fair share of troubles. Seek out troubled sylphs and see what might be done to ease their worries. A sound plan, would you not say? That said, the sylphs are not known to share their worries with outsiders. You would be better off inquiring with here in media of the Gardonians who reside here. She is most like to be privy to the sylphs' troubles. Praise be to the elementals. I cannot express how happy I am to see an adventure with a truly gentle heart. The Sils of Little Solace are sorely in need of aid. Pray hear me out. Being a temporary settlement, Little Solace wants for amenities, not least a stout set of defenses. Consequently, beasts from mounds around are free to wander in and terrorize the hapless residents. The Zygorans and the Gallnats that roam these parts are especially troublesome, but slaying one of each should swer serve as a warning to the rest. Furthermore, perhaps you could gather three brownie brushes as well. They play an important role in Sylphic culture, I do not claim to know the details, and what with such feral beasts prowling the forest, they are not easily come by. When you are done with these deeds, seek out that one again. He is slow to warm to outsiders, but your good intentions will not be lost on him. My own experiences speak to this. Fight me! I said fight me! Wait, did I? Now that I have... Yeah, I need Gristle Greens now that I have, uh... My Chocobo. That's something I always, uh... 
took a while to start getting to. Wait. The log is over here somewhere. There's a brownie brush. Come here, you ugly bug. Dancing one is still here. Dancing one can dance all day. This one trust is not so easily earned. Hmm? Dancing one brings brownie brushes for this one? This one can dye thread once more. This one is pleased. Dancing one kills bitey buzzy one? This one hates 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 bitey buzzy ones. Dancing one is kind. Too kind. Many walking ones come to these ones abode. But few are friendly like Dancing One. Perhaps this one was wrong not to trust Dancing One after all. Hey, we're level 30, so... We can do the Lancer missions now, whenever. Well, my personal thing is I always wait until like about 30. Depending on what I'm doing. If I'm rushing, like story a bit, then yeah. I, I definitely wait until then. This one asks Dancing One for forgiveness. These ones have many troubles since Walking Ones last came to our abode. This one must be careful. Always careful. But Dancing One is not like other one Walking Ones. This one can trust Dancing One. But this one would ask Dancing One for help. Strange Walking Ones with bodies of steel come to the, the home of these ones. This one thinks Steel Ones come from the Empire. Where Empire goes, many living ones become dead ones. Trees fall and bushes burn. These ones' home is in danger. Danger! This one begs of Dancing One to help this one know more. Dancing One is friends with these ones and Walking Ones, yes? Dancing One must speak to these ones here and Walking Ones in Hut House and find out more. This one has a bad feeling. This one fears steel ones are after something, but this one should speak no more. Go, dancing one. This one depends on kindness of dancing one. Strange steel walking ones? Yes, this one has seen. Steel walking ones carry big boxes. Maybe walking ones hunt for shiny treasures? This one likes treasures. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Shush, shush, this one says. Steel walking ones are scary, like touched ones. This one hates scary, and scary ones have scary friends. Men clad in strange armor. Why, now that you mention it, I did see some suspicious types of late. They were gathering deep in the forest. I simply assumed they were adventurers. Why would you not, like, alert people on that one, though? Like, bruh.
Fearsome types clad from head to toe in the steel, you say? Imperial soldiers, no doubt. I couldn't tell you what they're plotting, but I'm sure it's nothing good. Ugly bug. This one is happy to see Dancing One return. What did Dancing One learn? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And this one sees. Steel walking ones come from Empire, carrying boxes, and go walking deep. Deep through trees. As this one thought, steel walking ones are up to nasty, no good things. This one knows forest well. Steel walking ones try to hide, but this one will find them. This one would borrow dancing one's map. This one makes mark, right here. This is where steel ones hide. This one knows. Dancing one will go looking for steel ones, yes? Stunning me, jackasses. What you got here? Mine now. I'm out. Dancing one is back. This one breathed sigh of relief. This one was worried. Hmm? Dancing one found something? Dancing one found paper inside a box. This is a message from Empire. This one can read walking one's symbols. Message paper has names of food and rocks. Food and rocks were inside boxes. This one knows. But this one does not understand. Food and rocks mentioned all come from home of these ones. How do steel walking ones know how to find them? Is there sneaky one hiding behind this one's wings? Snooping one selling secrets to steel walking ones? This one fears for this one's home, but dancing one has helped this one much today. Dancing one must promise to always be friend to these ones. We'll see what we're doing, but this is probably a wrap up here for this episode. Now I'm gonna go get a drink. Cause I'm about out of my ripper right here, and then uh, I'll start the next thing. Helpful one arrives at a good time. This one needs helpful one's help. One of these ones named Classio ventured outside Little Solace alone. Alone is unsafe. Helpful one must find him. Classio struck west after leaving the settlement. Hurry before and they end up in the belly of a beastly one. Yeah, we're at like 51 minutes. The first one was long as well, so... Although it was mostly Vander Manderville things, so... We will, uh... Peace out here. And, uh, 
see you in episode 10 is the next one this should have been nine yeah so